What's up, you guys? It is March 14th on Thursday. Uh, it's 1 o'clock. I already just got back home from Zoo. I filmed with Joe. Uh, me and Joe filmed like a vlog with Al, my uh, homeboy videographer dude that does all my videos. And uh, yeah, it was cool. We did shoulders. It was just a few workouts. But it's like I've tried to video, like vlog as well when I've done like other video content where I've streamed with Fuzi or I've done other shit on camera. It just doesn't work. You can't like film two things at once. It's just way too hard. So it was, it was cool to just focus on one thing and take a day off from filming my workouts and get, have somebody else get to film me. It was kind of dope. So yeah, coming soon. As soon as we edit that up, Al's been really busy. So as soon as we get to that project, we'll edit that up. Also the podcast I shot with Jesse, my homeboy jacked, jacked like Jess. So that'll be cool. And me and Joe also filmed like a very, a short, uh, that's going to be like a 45 second clip, but we just haven't had a chance to edit any of these things. There's just a lot of projects stacking up, but it's good. We've, we've been filming and kept filming to stay on track so that when, uh, we do have time and it, it starts slowing down that we're able to, um, edit the projects and then have a bunch of videos ready. So yeah, it'll be cool. Really excited about all that. Uh, in, in other news, I got my streaming computer working, which is fucking amazing. I had to drive all the way to Tustin yesterday, which is so fucking far, like so far. Uh, it took me like almost an hour and a half to get there. I went to the micro center, bought all my parts, got everything I needed. I got upsailed a couple times on a few things, but I got like, uh, a Ryzen 7 7800, um, a 7900 GRE GPU, um, four terabytes of internal SSD hard drive space, um, 32 gigs of DDR5 RAM. Uh, so it's a pretty beast of a computer and a nice case, zero RGB, which is nice. Not one RGB light. Oh, and a water cooler, a Leon Lee water cooler. So all the nice shit that you would want to put in a nice gaming computer, and it's going to be fucking awesome. And so streams are going to be sick. I cannot wait to play some dope games, stream, do all the stuff, vid edit videos on this computer, do all kind of crazy shit. Um, every night, youtube.com forward slash AOshan, uh, 8 o'clock, going to be live streaming. So yeah, it's going to be a fun process to get into. And now that I got a computer that's fully capable I'm definitely going to be on it as much as possible because that was why I bought the computer and, and did it. I live streamed the whole uh, process of us building it last night and it was relatively easy to deal with, but we ran into one issue, me and my buddy Deshaun that was helping me build it, ran into one issue getting the power button sorted and the cables to the motherboard, but I'm not like a big nerd. Honestly, I don't even really know how to play video games that well, which is kind of funny is why to it's funny watching me play because I'm so terrible at it and it's just, I'm such a retard, but uh, I, I'm not really a big tech guy. I'm techy, but I just don't know how to build it and stuff like that. So it was a it's good experience to learn about it. And, you know, it was a little frustrating at points, but we got it together and computer works great now. So there's no issues. And now if in the future, if I need to upgrade any parts or do anything to it, it's going to be no problem. I'm, I'm really comfortable with the computer and know exactly where everything is and how it works or where it works or whatever, you know. So that's dope. Um, when I was with Joe, we were talking a lot about um, traveling and it reminded me of, uh, I mean, it didn't remind me. I mean, I should figure I should tell us the story to people that may not know. I'm a tattooer. I'm a tattoo artist. I started tattooing around 2005. Uh, late 2005, early 2006. So for quite a while, almost 18 years. And uh, uh, when I was in New York, I learned how to tattoo in New York. And when I was in New York, I tattooed there for a few years. And I ended up opening a tattoo shop in the Lower East Side. It was called Thicker Than Water with a friend of mine. And after a few years of working there, I started getting a little bit of itchy feet and wanted to go cruise around a little bit. I had a friend that was from high school that had moved to Taiwan in Taipei. So, you know, what? before that, sorry, rewind, rewind. Another friend of mine from my hometown in San Rafael, this girl, Elza, 
she uh, moved to France, Montpellier, France, in the south of France. So she said, hey, in around like, I don't know, fuck, 2007 or 2008, I had barely been tattooing for maybe a year or two. And she goes, come visit and tattoo me and my friends and we can, tat- you can get some appointments out here. It'll be real fun. So I pack up all my stuff and I fly to Paris and then I have to take a train all the way down the Euro tra- you know, Euro train to fucking Montpellier, which is the south of France for like seven hours away. It's so far. <laughs> Finally get there, show up. I don't know much about tattooing at this point. I mean, I do. I'd been tattooing for a little while at a tattoo shop, but I was doing horse shit tattoos. I go and I go to tattoo my first person. I plug everything in and I've never been to Europe before. It was first trip for me. And I didn't realize that the power conversion was higher there and whatever, and it melts my power supply. And I have no power supply within 30 seconds of starting to tattoo there. So I made friends with a tattoo artist at a shop there. She let me borrow a a power supply. I ended up tattooing my friends. It was pretty cool. Anyways, fast forward a few years later, about 2010, no, 2010, uh, my friend from growing up, TJ, had moved to Taiwan. He said, come visit me in Taiwan. It's real cool, blah, blah, blah. So I was like, all right, let me go out to Taiwan and tattoo. Now that I have a few years of tattooing under my belt, I kind of have a better understanding of what I'm trying to do. I go out there and I go for a month and I visit and I make a shit ton of money and I had a great time. And I come back and bought myself a laptop and shit because I had just done really well and didn't have to spend it. It's really cheap to stay out there and the food is cheap and his rent for the entire month was 300 bucks. I ended up giving him money for the 300 bucks to stay. Buying a bunch of weed out there it was crazy. We smoked out and it was crazy. It was an awesome time, a really good experience. Then uh, when I come back, I was like, man, I really want to go back to Asia and travel around. That was so much fun. I made a shit ton of money and like I was getting to travel. So then I get the wild hair up my ass to go traveling and I go to Spain and I stay in Spain for a month and I travel all around Spain. We go from uh, Madrid to Zaragoza, La Coruña, Granada, Motril, all over the whole fucking country. And after that, oh, after that, I go to Africa. I went to South Africa and I stayed in South Africa for a month and I was in Cape Town. And then we went to Joburg and uh, what's the other? Durban. And then we went to Durban and drove around and did like a 65 hour road trip in this little shitty car. It was crazy. And tattooing in a few different tattoo shops. And I went on a safari and did a bunch of crazy shit. Then after that, I just was like, man, I want to keep going. So we went over to Amsterdam. I ended up staying in Amsterdam for like two and a half months because Amsterdam, if you haven't been there, is one of the greatest. It's a fucking beautiful city. The girls are great. You can smoke weed anywhere. There's like fucking cool spots to eat. It's really cool. The culture is dope. They, they know about cool music and everything is dope there. So I was chilling in Amsterdam for a while and then I wanted to go back to Asia. So then I... F- Flew back to Taiwan and I stayed in Taiwan for three months. I got an apartment. I was working at a tattoo shop, had a little girlfriend and shit and was tattooing there. And I started getting itchy feet again and wanted to go to Japan. So I went to Japan um, and ended up staying in Japan for three months. And mind you, there was some other trips in between. I ended up going to the Philippines and Korea and a bunch of these other little smaller trips, but I'm just trying to give you guys a gist of of this, a year of traveling. And again, so all of a sudden I look back and I had been on the road for an entire year. I hadn't been back to the United States in over a year, like 13 months. And I'm in Japan. I was in a small town called Hirosaki in the mountains of Japan. And... I had been smoking weed wherever, every place I went, I got to smoke weed, even Korea, which is like a super no-no and really hard to get weed and really expensive. And we're in Japan and it was expensive. It was like 150 bucks a gram for weed out there. 
and I could get it, but it was just so expensive. And also, like you would you would hit the guy up to get weed, and it's not like California. It would take like a week to get to have him come through and bring it to you, and then it'd be nine hundred bucks for like a quarter of weed. It was crazy. It was fucking crazy. So. After doing that a few times, we would start flying to different places. So I flew, we flew to Amsterdam and we went to Amsterdam for like oh, 10 days and just smoked as much weed as we could and then went back to Japan and just kicked it. And then one time we're like, you know what, let's go to LA and go smoke a bunch of weed in LA, go sit on the beach, go kick it and then we'll come back to Japan and keep doing what we're doing. So we fly out to LA and I got stuck. It was like 2012 at that point. And I didn't get stuck, but I just was kind of tired. I fucking hit a wall. I'd been on the road for fucking like 14 months and I didn't have any stuff. Like everything I owned was in a backpack because I kind of had to re relinquish everything I owned in New York to kind of keep the ball rolling. And I even had to give up my shares of my tattoo shop just because it wasn't fair to collect on something I had no part in anymore. So... It was kind of a, it was a weird reset. And after resetting in 2012 and feeling like, okay, I had already had a thing, some accolades and some things that were working for me, I had to restart and start again. And I didn't even have a cell phone because somebody had stolen my cell phone when I was in Africa. And it had ruined my credit because I wasn't able to turn off the cell phone bill. And I had to start my credit over again. I had to start saving. I had to do everything uh, all over again and uh it was pretty crazy but i put my head down kept grinding and uh ended up opening a shop in hawaii and then was able to open a shop here in los angeles and that's was that's high seas tattoo parlor which i still have the first location was on sunset boulevard and then uh, we had problems with m uh, rats and black mold and all kind of weird neighbors and shit so we moved about a year and a half into being there and I've been on Melrose for about eight and a half years and it's been great. You know, I'm really happy and blessed to have our tattoo shop and I've gotten to inspire and help so many young men with their journeys and their careers and help people make money and help people get tattoos and learn about tattooing. And it's really, it's been an amazing experience for me. So, you know, as long as we keep our head down, as long as we grind, we can do anything we want. Well, I appreciate you guys. You guys know the deal. This vlog was a little different than usual, but hopefully the story was <laughs> entertaining to listen to. Like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you guys tomorrow. We'll have a regular workout. It's going to be uh, chest day, beginning of the week. All right, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Peace.